Okay, guys, let's uh, go discussion about 2D kinematics. I thought I'd do something uh, kind of fun today. Uh, so I, I was thinking about different ways to show you applications of this two-dimensional uh, kinetics problem. Uh, often we call it the projectile motion problem. And uh, this is one that I've used before. I think it's funny. It's amusing, but I think it'll get you thinking about uh, what you actually would do this stuff. So anyway, here, this is a movie poster here I'm showing you uh, for a movie that came out uh, a few years ago uh, called Skyscraper with Dwayne Johnson. Um, and you can kind of just look at this image and tell that he's going to have a bad day. Now, I haven't seen this movie, but I've seen this movie. You know what I mean? This is the the action hero that's going to, he's obviously jumping from this scaffolding here, and he's going to make it in this window. Uh, now, we know how this is going to work out. He's not going to land perfectly in the window. He's going to end up hanging by his fingertips and heroically make an entry and save the day. You can almost look at this and just kind of intuit from what you see about motion that this is probably not going to work. So what I want to do is I want to use what we have done so far with projectile motion and 2D kinematics to prove or disprove the, the stunt being done here. In other words, could this really happen? Would he survive or would he end up as a greasy stain on the pavement? Well, we don't have a whole lot to go on just from the image. So we're gonna have to make a few assumptions, but not as many as you would think. We can actually do a little bit of Google research and we can calculate some things with a reasonable degree of accuracy. The only thing that I can Google for sure that I know about, because I don't know what building this is, I don't know what city this is supposed to be down here. I don't know how high up this crane is. It doesn't really matter. Don't know how long this crane is. Don't know how big these windows are. Again, doesn't matter. Because those are all composited, fake CG kind of things. What I can find out though, with a reasonable degree of accuracy, is we're going to assume this is really Dwayne Johnson doing this stunt. So with a reasonable degree of accuracy, we can find out how big he is. We can find out how tall he is. For now, I'm just going to make an annotation here using paint. I'm just going to make an annotation. We use this color. No, come on. There we go. We're going to make this distance here. I don't like that color, actually. Can't see that. We do it in black and with a thicker brush, that will probably help. There we go. So we have this distance here, and we can measure that because we know how tall Dwayne Johnson is. I've done a little bit of Google research here, just so you don't think that I care how tall Dwayne Johnson is and have it committed to memory. I don't. Um, I looked it up. He's about 1.95 meters tall, which works out to about six feet, four inches if you like uh, freedom units. But as physicists, we really don't. So we know kind of how tall he is. Cool. Well, the other thing we can do here 
is we can make some measurements using our unit of measure of the rock, right? One rock, one Duane is about 1.5 meters. So I use some different software that I have to do this, but and these numbers are not gonna be extremely spot on, but they'll be close. We know we have some distance. Oh, that's a really sucky line there. Uh, let me see. Yeah, here we go. I think I can actually draw a straight line with this program. Yeah. So we know we have some horizontal distance here. This is going to be the distance from approximately the edge of this scaffolding to the window. And we're going to have another distance that's going to be approximately, come on, I didn't want that color. That's going to be approximately the vertical distance from the edge of the platform here down to the bottom of the window. Again, just to save us a little bit of time in class, I've used some other software and some eyeballing. And I calculated that this distance here is around 7.4 meters for a vertical distance. Similarly, I estimate that the horizontal distance here, wow, that's uh, not good. So let's choose a different color, how about it? There we go. That horizontal distance is about 15.6 meters. Now we know everything we need to know to solve this problem. So what we're gonna to have to do in order to solve this problem is a little bit of physics. So let me switch over to, yeah, you know, let me switch over to my whiteboard here. So here's my whiteboard. And so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna draw a quick diagram of what's going on. So we have a vertical distance, we have some horizontal distance and using Dwayne Johnson as our base unit, we've determined this is about 7.4 meters and this is about 15.6 meters. Now that means that we have some sort of slope going on here. We are gonna assume for the moment that there's no angle, okay? So in other words, we're gonna assume he just runs straight off of this thing and there's not any kind of forward thrust There's no theta that we have to worry about in this case. So we're going to do this almost like a free fall projectile motion problem. And you're probably going, well, that's not realistic. You're right. It's not, but it will give us an estimate. What it's going to do is it's going to give us an estimate of the absolute best case scenario. Again, remember spherical cow in a vacuum. So we're not talking about air resistance. We're not worried about the morphology of Dwayne Johnson, none of that. So we're gonna assume that this is in a vacuum and that if we travel forward just as 
quickly as we travel downward that we're going to make it. If we were to add in this angle, if we were to add in this jump, then we're going to complicate matters and we're actually going to decrease our horizontal speed, which is what we don't want to do. So we're going to take the best, absolute most ideal scenario for this. So we need to do a couple of things. The first thing we need to do is recall our kinematics equations. Well, if I can get the stupid thing to write. There's my electronic pen just died here. Stand by, we'll see. Oh, I know. It helps if I turn it on. So we need our standard kinematics equations. So our S is just our position. Our V naught is our initial velocity. T is the time. One half is just one half. A is the acceleration. In this case, the only acceleration we're worried about is the acceleration due to gravity. T is the same time again. We also know that our final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration times the time. So what are we going to do? We can make another assumption here, and I'm going to show you what it is in a second. It's a little bit tricky. It's not something you might not, it's something you might not initially think about doing. But before we get there, let's solve what we can. The first thing that we can solve for here that we're interested in is this time, right? If we know, we already know the distance. So if we know a time, then we know a velocity, right? Because velocity is distance per time. So we need to find a time. Remember, this is an ideal situation. We're going to assume that the amount of time it takes to do the vertical drop is the same amount of time it takes to travel horizontally, and that will be fine. So what do we know? We know that our final velocity is going to be zero. Okay, he's going to stop when he hits the wall or when he hits the ground there. Whether it's hanging by his fingers or actually landing perfectly in the window, it doesn't matter. His vertical velocity is going to go to zero. We don't know what the initial velocity is, so we're just going to call that v naught for now. We know what the acceleration due to gravity is. That's our 9.8. And we don't know what the time is. Remember to use the negative on the uh, acceleration due to gravity because we're assuming down is our negative direction. Well, let's rearrange this a little bit. And what we'll get is a negative V naught equals a negative 9.8 T. This is where we're gonna be clever. We think we might be stuck, but we're not. What do we know about velocity? Velocity, well, first of all, we can get rid of these negatives, right? They're both going to cancel. So we take care of our negative problem. We know that velocity is just distance times time, right? If velocity is distance per time, then we can go, okay, this is distance per time. We can then work out that our initial velocity then has got to be, let's see where I wrote my notes, here we go. We rearrange this equation we know what our x is. We know what our distance is. So if we rearrange our equation, we'll come out with something that looks like this. Zero equals xt over a, 
which is 9.8. The reason I can write velocity like this, xt, let me, uh, to a new page here, there we go. The reason I can do that is if velocity is distance per time, then if I say, if I multiply this by time again, notice the t's are gonna cancel, and that's why I can do that. Anyway, when you work this out, you'll find that T works out to be 0.75 seconds. Cool. Since we know now that is the total time, what we can do, let's go to a new page here. We know our time is 0.74 seconds. Now we can go back into our standard range formula, x equal x naught plus b naught t plus one half a t squared. Okay, that's our horizontal range. Now remember, we couldn't do this before because we didn't know anything about initial velocity and we didn't know anything about time. Well, ultimately, the question that we need to ask ourselves and we need to find the answer to is how fast does he have to run in order to make this jump? So we're going to solve for this V naught. Now, before we made, we did some clever physics work and we made the V naught piece go away. Um, so since we made that go away, we work this out, we find that our time is 0.74 seconds. So if we go back to our uh, calculation, we know that our distance, our final distance we want is 15.6 meters. Okay, remember that's in the horizontal. We pick our X naught to be zero. We don't know what our V naught is yet, but we do know a T, which is 0 0.74. Our minus one half, 9.8. Remember to account for that negative. And in our T, again, 0 0.75. Don't forget to square that value. If you plug this into your calculator, what you're gonna solve is you're gonna get a V naught is gonna be about 24.4 meters per second. Seems kind of fast. Well, how do I know? First of all, so I wanna ask myself, well, is this reasonable? Do we think Dwayne Johnson can run that fast? Well, let's find out. We need some standard to measure it against. So let's say that I, my standard I'm gonna measure against is I'm gonna find out the fastest person in the world. Well, Somebody I know that's really fast over short distances. There was a guy in the Olympics a couple of years ago called Usain Bolt. And I looked it up and Usain Bolt's world record time is 100 meters in about 9.8 seconds. It's pretty damn fast. So what does that give you? That's 100 meters, and we'll call it roughly 10 meters per second. So 100 divided by 10 gives you 10. 
So that means that Usain Bolt, the Olympic sprinter, was reaching speeds of about 10 meters per second. Well, we just calculated in order for Dwayne Johnson to make this jump, to make the stunt, he has to be moving at 24.4 meters per second. Not possible. The dude's dead. So now we're going to say, well, all right. If we know that our V naught value is 24.4, And we want to find out, well, okay, but he's not just running straight off of this thing. He's jumping. So what can we do? We're going to have to make another assumption. Let's just draw our platform. He's going to run some distance along the platform, and he's going to jump at some angle. Now, we're going to have to make an assumption for this angle. We know he's not going to jump vertically because that would defeat the purpose and be stupid. We know he's not going to go completely horizontally. That would put our theta at zero, which is the calculation we just did. So we're going to assume some angle. Let's say just for the sake of argument, to have some number that he makes an angle of 35 degrees with that platform. Well, if we know in order to make this jump, his horizontal velocity must be 24.4. So if we think of this as a triangle with an angle theta, and this base leg is 24.4 meters per second, we need to find this. We need to find that velocity here. That's our uh, velocity as we come off of the thing. That's our total. And remember, if this is our x direction, look how we assumed positive to the left for our x direction. You probably didn't even consciously notice that as we were doing the problem. This is what I mean by pick a coordinate system that is convenient. We absolutely could have set the coordinate system up where the origin was the window. And then everything we did would have a negative sign. They would all cancel in the end, so who cares? But doing this, our forward direction of motion, is the way we generally think about positive. So we've just set this up to be a positive direction. Well, we know then that is going to be our velocity in the x direction. And we know from the previous lecture that the velocity in the x direction is the total velocity times the cosine of the angle. Well, we know what our X velocity has to be is 24.4. We'd like to find that initial velocity. And we need to know something about the cosine of the angle. I don't know what cosine of uh, 35 is off the top of my head. So we'll just plug it into a calculator here real quick. Uh, let's see. 35 cosine, no, I want that in degrees. Hold on. <clears throat> yeah, all right. Let's 
So it gets me about 0.8. So that means our V naught is 24.4 divided by 0 0.8. Let's figure out what that works out to be real quick. It means our V naught has to be 35 or 30.5 meters per second. So that means that velocity that he launches himself with on that angle has got to be 30 meters per second. Let's complicate the problem even further. I read today when I was researching this problem because I haven't seen this movie, but this makes sense because of course, uh, the character has a prosthetic leg. Now, I don't have much experience with prosthetic limbs, but I'm going to assume that this is not a bionic limb. I'm further going to assume that that might reduce his top speed by a little bit. And remember, we didn't account for wind resistance. So that's going to reduce his speed even more. Now, there is an advanced calculus problem you can do where you can account for wind resistance. And you'll find when you do that that he has to be going at something in the order of 40 meters per second uh, in the horizontal to make this happen, which ain't gonna work. It's pretty fast. So the point of this exercise, I want you to see that we have done all the problems that we've done in the previous couple of lectures and things that you've seen in the homework. We've done all the same kind of problems here. We just applied them to a sort of real world scenario. But you can see if we go back, it's all a right triangle problem. Now we had to do a little bit of work to figure out what these two distances are, our vertical and horizontal distance. But remember, we did that from visual cues. We just looked at the movie poster and we did a Google search and we figured out how tall he is. Plug those numbers in, did a right triangle problem, and we found these distances. Didn't even have to really do a right triangle problem, right? We could just put it on a piece of paper, take a ruler and measure it and do a one-to-one. -one. Doesn't matter. But we could do some pretty rudimentary math and we could figure out, oh, that's what this must be. So once we know those distances, we make the assumption that really what we need is that horizontal velocity. Well, in order to find the horizontal velocity, because this is a projectile that is only under the influence of gravity, and we need to know a time before we can calculate a range, we can assume that the time it takes for this thing to go, it's to make its total vertical transition has also got to be the time it takes to make its total horizontal transition. The vertical one is really easy. So we plug the numbers in there. We do a little bit of trickery with how we arrange for distance and velocity. And remember that little trick that I showed you, not, not what I wanted, that since velocity is distance per time, we know a distance and we want to find, uh, we want to find a velocity out of this. Well, if velocity is distance per time, then distance is the same thing as velocity times time. So we can absolutely do that problem. Just a little math trickery there. So we find out what our time is in the y direction, knowing that has to be the same in the x direction. We plug that back into our kinematics equation. Notice 
we used exactly the same equation both times, except we interchanged x and y in these things. We used our velocity function, find our time. And it was pretty simple, right? We just plug these things in and we get our horizontal velocity. Once we know the horizontal velocity, then we can incorporate this angle and we can start thinking about what angle that has to be and how quickly it has to come off of that. You could even take it a step further and find out what kind of acceleration he would need to undergo to get up to that velocity. Well, if we look at that, that scaffolding he's on there, he doesn't have more than a couple of feet. So that means in about two steps, he has to accelerate from zero up to roughly 25 meters per second in less than a meter. So that means he's going to experience about two and a half Gs of acceleration just running. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not buying. I don't think he makes it. Anyway, just kind of a silly little fun exercise to do uh, to get you thinking about how to use these equations. If this scared you, don't worry about it. I'm not going to put anything this complex on the test. But I wanted you to see how it comes together. Keep doing the homeworks. Uh, you guys are doing pretty well on those, it looks like. And again, expect a test in about a week. So I, let's see. Oh, Sahar came in. Um, so do you have any questions before I stop? Yeah. Um, do we only have two um, assignments for three? Yeah. Okay. Because I, I, thought some, I thought you were saying you added and I was like, okay, maybe I'm missing one. No, because that, um, that third homework set uh, for all these two-dimensional problems, I know that this is where it gets a little bit tricky. It, it is. It was really, really super hard. To be honest, the homework wasn't easy. <laughs> and that's why I didn't do three little mini assignments, because I figured you were probably going to struggle enough with the two uh, to yeah. keep it busy. And well, really, the only other one that I have is just more of the same. So when we study for the exam, okay, I'll understand and look at the formulas. I go to the readings for yeah. each um, equation. So that kind of yeah. helped a lot. Yeah. Other than that, I'm guessing. Yeah. And then, um, so we'll study those and then we'll just have questions similar to them. Yeah. Yep. I have a big scrap uh, notebook and I think it's already full. <laughs> then you're doing <laughs> physics correctly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what I, I'm going to stop the recording here real quick. Okay. Stand by. Come on. <laughs>